Oh, okay. That's what I was going to say. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. go.
All right, we ready for them? Yes? Good. Mr. Martin, you ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, yes, thank you. This will be for uh, okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You can be seated. Welcome back. Can't see a couple of you, but um, Mr. Martin's going to use that screen here in just a minute. Um, were you all able to abide by my instructions during the recess? All right. Hopefully you got a good lunch and a little few minutes break. Uh, well, I think we're ready to begin. Mr. Martin? Yes. <coughs> Your Honor, at this time, pursuant to a previous stipulation, uh, case exhibit number one, which will be the raw <coughs> video. At this time, I'd ask the court to read uh, the stipulation uh, instruction and the stipulation to the jury. And it'll be marked as identification at this point as A. Okay. A for identification? Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, I read you this uh, instruction earlier, and I'm going to read it again. This is about stipulations. When lawyers agree that certain facts are true, that is called a stipulation of fact. You must accept stipulated facts as having been proven. However, the significance of these facts, as with all facts, is for you to decide. In this case, the stipulated facts that you must accept as true are the state and the defense agree that authenticity and chain of custody under this stipulated order means that each of the below referenced items of evidence, one, are what this stipulated order describes them to be, thereby removing any need to authenticate and or identify them pursuant to Florida statute, and to contain a fair and accurate representation of the data that a, the camera recording system within the Cobb Grove movie theater captured and the Cobb Theater preserved. Right. Oh, okay. All right. We've got uh, State's Exhibit 1, which will be um, 1-AWS. 2-AWS and 3-AWS, and these are flash drives. Yes? Mr. Martin, do you need this back? This yes, one? Yes, I do. There you go. Your Honor, at this time, the state would move state's exhibit number A, marked for identification, and as state's exhibit number one, pursuant to the stipulation, request permission to publish state's exhibit number one. You may publish, and it'll be admitted. And this time I have it on my screen as yes. well, and that one, so I'm, I won't be repositioning. Yes, Your Honor.
Uh, may I reposition myself? You may. Any anyone that needs to go ahead. <coughs> Your Honor, pursuant to a, a stipulation reached by the parties at this time, the state uh, would move into evidence state's exhibit A and B marked for identification and ask that you read the stipulation uh, regarding state's exhibits number two and three. Are we on two and three? I mean, is it B and C? Yeah, okay. but the stipulation covers both of them. So okay. we're on mark for identification as B and C. Okay. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm going to read you the same um, stipulation uh, instruction about when lawyers agree that certain facts are true, that it, that is called a stipulation of fact. You must accept stipulated facts as having been proven. However, the significance of these facts, as with all facts, is for you to decide. In this case, the stipulated facts that you must accept as true is as follows. Uh, let's see. All right, states exhibit two and three are exhibits from previously stipulated video evidence which captured some of the interaction of Chad Olson and Curtis Reeves inside the Cobb Theater uh, at various locations, including theater number 10 on January 13, 2014. Further, the state and defense stipulate and agree the blue screen seen in state's exhibits number two represents the time where the motion-activated camera system did not record any video. 
Further, the state and defense stipulate and agree the embedded timestamp seen on the video runs continually from the beginning to the end of the video. The timestamp includes the time the system did not record video as represented by the blue screens. All right, at this time the state would move um, exhibit B, mark for identification, as state's exhibit number two, and move state's exhibit number two into evidence. I would also ask that state's exhibit C, mark for identification, um, be moved in as state's exhibit number three. All right. There'll be. We had no objection Thank yesterday. You. They'll be admitted um, as two and three. All right. May I publish uh, exhibit two at this time? You may. And may I relocate? Yes.
just watch is Space Exhibit Number Two from Camera Eleven. Um, I'm now going to play Space Exhibit Number Two from Camera Twelve, which is a different angle, and uh, you, there will be the same blue screens. Uh, there'll be a, like a seven-minute break and a three-minute break, but that's. Okay. <clears throat> is that um, Exhibit Three or? No, ma'am. This is. Exhibit number two, there's two. A, right, there's two cameras, camera 11 and 12. Okay. And the last video on space exhibit number two in the ABI format will be a quad view, which will put them side by side so you can see okay. uh, put together.
replace states exhibit number two, which would be the quad view. It has both cameras synced together. The time frame is the same, um, but the cameras pick up different times.
Yep, you're ready. You want to rearrange the podium? I anticipate you'll be using that. Who's your next? Uh, you got your next witness? Yes, Sean. Nicole Olson. All right. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self you got? I do. Go ahead, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mrs. Olson. Good afternoon. Would you please state your name for the record and spell your last name for the benefit of the court reporter? Nicole Olson, O-U-L-S-O-N. Ms. Olson, what city do you live in? Lando Lakes. How long have you lived there? About 15 years. Back in 2014, were you married? I was, yes. And your husband's name? Chad Olson. And in 2014, how long had you been married? We were married in 2007, so about seven years. Children? Yes, one daughter. Okay. In 2014, how old was she? 22 months, or just under two. And her name? Alexis. Okay. In 2014, uh, were you working outside the home? I was, yes. Where were you working? At USAA. And what did you do at USAA? I managed a team of insurance agents. So they um, issued and serviced insurance policies, and I made sure that um, they were in compliance and doing their responsibilities. And if you could, as of 2014, how long have you been doing that job? I started in 2007, same year I got married, so about seven years. Are you still employed there? Yes, I am. Same position? Yes. Same duties? Same duties, yes. In 2014, was your husband Chad employed? He was, yes. And where was he employed? Sky Power Sports. The name has changed over time, but I believe that's what it was at the, that year. Sky Power Sports, uh, is that a retail business? It is, yes. And what sort of merchandise do they sell? Bikes and four-wheelers, maybe jet skis, <laughs> thing, recreational vehicles, sports things. What was your uh, husband's Chad's uh, responsibilities or duties? What was his job there? He was in sales, so he did the floor when customers came in. And as of 2014, how long had he worked there? About the same time we moved over to this area around 2007, and that was 
his job since then. Okay. Let me go back to USAA. Mm -hmm. uh, on the campus of that business, is there a daycare? There is, yes. In 2014, did you take advantage of that employee benefit and uh, Lexi was uh, at that daycare? Yes. The significant date here is January 13, 2014, so I'm using that date as a reference. Prior to that, how long has she been going to that daycare? How long have you been using that facility? Her whole life since she was about six weeks old, so just under two years. Now, you mentioned that uh, she was about 22 months old. Yes. Has she begun to get some teeth, cut some teeth? Fun times, yes, she was teething. Okay, what do you mean by fun times? Cranky, fussy, never knew from day to day or minute to minute how she was going to be acting or feeling. Did she ever get fevers associated with the teething? She did, yes. Ear aches? Possibly, yes. I want to talk a, bit, a little bit just about you and your husband. All right. Um, would you do me a favor? Would you just stand up, please? Yes, sir. All right, and how tall are you? About? Five, two-ish. I have heels on, so maybe right. a little taller today. And approximately how tall uh, was your husband? Six, four, six, five. Yeah, have a seat. <coughs> Let me show you what's been marked for identification purposes as state's exhibit number two. <coughs> do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. And who is depicted in that photograph? Myself and Chad. Okay. I'm going to refer to it as the yard photograph because there's foliage behind okay. it. Okay. In that uh, in that photograph, uh, are the two of you standing side by side? We are, yes. And using that photograph as a reference, does that particular photograph uh, fairly show the difference in height between you two? I believe so. Yes. I was wearing flats, and he was wearing probably sneakers or. And you come up about where? His shoulder. Yeah, you know, at this time I've moved Clark for identification as Stacy Exhibit J and move it in as next exhibit in order. Yeah. We had a previous objection on it. We would renew it at this time. Okay. So it's uh, exhibit same. four. Mm -hmm. It'll Is be it admitted? admitted as exhibit four. May I publish? You may. Before you is State's Exhibit Number Four. Um, who is in that photograph? Myself and Chad. Right. And you indicated that uh, both of you were wearing uh, flat shoes. Yes. And does that uh, photograph uh, represent uh, the difference <coughs> in height uh, between you two? Yes. Right. And you're about up to his shoulder. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I totally missed the table. I thought it was here. Taylor? Thank you. What I'd like to do now is direct your attention to January 13th, 2014. It's a Monday. Yes. It's a weekday. Had you worked the Saturday before? I did, yes. Your normal days are what? 
Normally Monday through Friday, but as a manager, we have to rotate Saturdays on occasion, about once a quarter, and that just happened to be my Saturday to work. All right. Did you have Monday, January the 13th off? I chose that day off, yes. Okay. Since the uh, uh, Lexi came into your life, uh, do you and your husband, Chad, get many days alone together? No, hardly any. It's all about her, right? Oh, yes. Okay. On Monday, January 13th of 2014, did you have an opportunity to use the daycare center at USAA and so that you and Chad could have a day to yourself? Yes, we did. Okay. Let's just kind of take us through the day up until the new time hour, okay? Okay. All right. During the, uh, before you left the house, did you have any definite plans about what you were going to do that day? No definite plans, no. Just you want to spend it together? Together, yes. Okay. Tell me about Lexi. Was she teething? She was, yes. Describe her, I hate to use demeanor for a 22 month old, but how was, how was she acting? Just drooling and always wanting to put things in her mouth, um, kind of irritated. Um, a little fussy. Okay. She had been at the daycare uh, before with those symptoms? Yes. All right. Nothing new to them? No. Okay. You had no problems then using the, the staff at that particular daycare center to, to take care of your child who was having these normal, I call them growing pains, teething? As long as there's no fever, then yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And if there is a fever, what is the protocol at the campus? We would have to take her home. Okay. And you would get a phone call to that effect? That's correct. About what time uh, did the three of you finally leave the house and you drive to the campus of USAA and go to the daycare? You know, I, I didn't have a specific time to be at work, so we just kind of gradually got up and got moving that morning. I don't know an exact time, but later morning, nine-ish approximately. Before you left the house, were there any definite plans after you dropped Lexi off at the daycare? No definite plans other than to stay close in case we got a phone call. All right, All right so we, we leave the house mm -hmm. and we drive to USAA. You drop uh, uh, Lexi off? Yes. And tell me that process. Did you just go in and say, here, run out, or what was the process? Well, no, you have to badge in um, to get into the campus, and you have to badge in to get into the daycare. Um, normally, it's my routine, since she's coming to work with me, to bring her and pick her up. So I was the more familiar face there. Um, but that morning, Chad got an opportunity to come, so he was excited to he had been there before, but not as frequently as me. So we went in together, and he talked to um, the staff and went into her classroom and talked to her teacher. And um, we just kind of talked about what she was experiencing with the teething and you know, just to be mindful of it, and we were around if, if needed. You then leave uh, the daycare. Yes. While you're still on campus, are there any plans made, or was that later? Later. All right. So where did you go after you dropped off Lexi? Well, we decided to get breakfast at Cracker Barrel, which is pretty close by to my work. Okay. And we went and had some breakfast. Okay. You know approximately what time that is? Breakfast time? 10, 10.30, <laughs> okay. possibly, yes. During breakfast, were there any discussions about what you were going to do with the rest of your day? Yes, that is when we decided right. our plans. All right. And... Uh, tell us what the decision was. What were you going to do? Well, we need, knew we needed to stay close, so we decided to um, see a movie. Um, but we had time prior to that starting, so we decided to go to the Wiregrass Mall and just walk around, do a little bit of window shopping, and just kill some time. All right. Is Wiregrass Mall a mall like we had in the 80s where it's just one big box and all the stores are in, or is it at one of those outside malls. It's an outdoor mall and it was a beautiful day. That's part of why we decided to go there. Okay. Right. And after breakfast, did you in fact go there? We did, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
chat have a cell phone? Yes. Okay. While at the uh, Wiregrass Mall, uh, was there an occasion when Chad showed you some, something on the, his phone that he wanted to show you? Yes. What did he show you? It was a football meme type joke. It was just a, kind of a conversation between different quarterbacks where they were picking on each other and kind of bickering back and forth. I did not take it to be a real conversation. It was just made up kind of funny about how many Super Bowl rings I have compared to how many you have, things like that. And we looked at it and laughed for a, a little bit. A little bit of entertainment. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about the movies. How often uh, do you and Chad go to the movies? We went quite often prior to Lexi being born. Since Lexi was born, I'd say a very few. And what is it about the, the going to the movies outside the home that is attractive for that type of style of entertainment to you and Chad? It's just family fun, just some quiet time where we can you know, kind of get close together and spend some time together and enjoy something that we have in common. From the uh, Wiregrass Mall, did you have, a go, have an occasion to go to the Cobb Theater at 6333? Wesley Grove Boulevard, Wesley Chapel, Pasco, Florida. We went to that theater, yes. Okay. Had you made a decision before you got there as to what movie you wanted to see? We did, yes. And what movie was that? Lone Survivor. Okay. Once you arrived, well, do you recall approximately what time the movie Lone Survivor started? I believe 1.20ish, a little after 1. And you got there before then? We're always early to everything, <laughs> so yes. <laughs> okay. You and Chad go up to the, I guess it's an outside ticket window? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Did you buy a ticket? Yes, two tickets. Uh, for Lone Survivor? Yes. Once you purchased the ticket and you went inside, do you, do you at that time learn what theater number within that mega plex complex at the of numerous theaters yes there's an assistant in there that tells you and points you in the right direction and it was that theater number 10 it was yes what i like to do is uh take you through uh, well first is when you go in is there a lobby there is yes is there a concession yes prior to going to theater 10 did you and Chad take advantage of the concession and purchase some snacks for the movie? We did, yes. All right. After you purchased the snacks, uh, did you make your way to Theater 10? Yes. Maybe a bathroom break, I don't. But, but yes, we did make our way to the theater. All right. What I'd like to do is take you through going into the theater uh, and uh, the selection of the seats and where you sat. Okay? That's okay. what we're going to talk about yes. next. When you came into the theater, uh, did you notice uh, the lighting conditions when you arrived? When you first walked in and, you know, you walk in, okay, there it is. What was the lighting condition? It was dim, but you could clearly see, you know, where you were navigating to your seats and get situated around you. Were there stairs that uh, provided you uh, access to the various levels within the theater? Yes. Could you see those stairs? Yes. All right. Were there other patrons within the theater when you first arrived? Very few, but I believe so, yes. All right. With the lighting conditions when you first came in, could you uh, see those individuals? Yes. Could you make out gender, male, female? Yes. Uh, color of hair? Yes. Uh, if one had a red shirt, a blue shirt, color of clothing? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> when you walked in, was there any previews playing? First walked in. Not what I consider previews, no. Maybe something on the screen, advertisements, maybe, but Make not you hungry to go buy food? food. Yes, yeah, but okay. not advertisement, or not previews that I recall. All right. Uh, was the sound system loud, soft, normal? I don't know how else to describe it. Normal. Right. I don't recall any specifics. Right. Once you walked in, uh, did you um, decide where you wanted to sit? Yes. And is there a particular location when you go to the movies that you like? Uh, I always have to be the aisle. I always have to be up front. I always have to, you know what I mean. 
Kind of, yes, but not specific seats that we had to be. We would take into consideration if somebody was already in that area, then we would flex, but we like to be up top. All right, and so you followed your routine? Pretty much, yes. Did you walk up the stairs? Yes, we did. And did you choose uh, the row that uh, was going to be your spot for the day? We did, yes. When in that theater is at the, when you said the top, is there a wall and then kind of like a restaurant, I'm not a restaurant, but an eating area above? A cinebistro is what I believe they call it, yes, as you described. All right. From that, and from the center bistro, the general public can't get there, right? Right. I think there's a whole separate entrance for that. So let's talk about from that area, uh, is there a road chair? against that wall? Yes. Uh, is there another row? Below that, yes. All right. Which row were you in? The one that butts up in or the one down? One down from the very top. All right. And to what area did you finally make your way to take your seat? Approximately. Pretty close to the middle, but probably a little off center. When you first sat down and, and the seats are kind of in the middle, one row down from the wall, yes. was there anyone seated behind you? Not that I noticed at the time, no. Right. Now Chad had showed you some um, something funny on his phone while at the mall. So I want to talk to you about once in the theater. Uh, can you tell us whether or not your husband Chad uh, uh, retrieved his phone from wherever he keeps it and was uh, using his phone for entertainment or whatever he was doing. Yes, he was. Okay. When you first sat down, there was no movie or previews on this. Correct. Screen. As you sit there and people come in and out, did any was there anyone seated in front where you sat down, or after you sat down, did anyone come and sit down in front of you? Yes, there is one specific person that I remember. Which one was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Was he there when you got there, or did he show up later? Oh, showed up later. Okay. Did your husband, Chad, have any contact with that individual? He did, yes. Uh, explain to us, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about maybe what was said, but just what was the interaction between the two of them? The other gentleman initiated the conversation, and it was just small talk. It was um, about different movies that were coming out, um, what other movie theaters in the area that they liked. Um, something about an animated movie that I, Hong Kong or King Kong, something to, to that. Just small talk, friendly, friendly talk. About how long did that last? Hard to say, probably a minute or two. Were, <laughs> other, were other patrons also talking within the theater? You might not have been able to hear the words, but you could hear voices. I don't recall. Okay. What I'd like to do is let's go through a series of, of photographs, okay? okay. And uh, uh, let me do that. It takes just a few minutes. I'm going to show them to you. Mr. Esper, would you like to see one? Okay. I don't want to bring them up. Yeah. 
approach the witness and bring these to the side so she can we can lay the proper predicate and I'll ask the court to come yeah. out. Yeah. That'd be all right? Uh-huh. Yes. And I'll talk loud. Okay. Judge, we don't have a need to do the predicate. We we agreed to them coming in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, I do need to lay what they are and for the record. Sure. All right. So let me come back over here. <laughs> I, would, I wish I would have told you earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, I have a series of uh, 8 by 10 photographs with a corresponding poster board. The uh, items are numbered so that the photograph and the poster board uh, or one numerical apart, but it's the same JPEG number. So at this time, uh, mark for identification, it states exhibit number E. I'm sorry, I'm going to take this off. All right. I'll do the photographs first. The okay. photograph is states exhibit number D, mark for identification, and states exhibit number E marked for identification. Both of them uh, are JPEG, num JPEG number 2081427. Uh, at this time, I would move uh, States Exhibit e, D and E into evidence next in order. Five and six? All right, you're gonna admit both of them? Yes, that's- Okay. 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 Yes, okay. <coughs> All right, so that'll be uh, five and six? Correct. Yeah. The photo's five and the poster's mm -hmm. six. All right, the next photograph and uh, the state's exhibit mark for identification <coughs> H and state's mark for identification I. Uh, photograph and a, an enlargement, JPEG number 2060324. Next in order. Seven and eight. They'll be admitted. Photo seven, poster eight. Identification, it Q doesn't and matter. R for identification. Uh, JPEG number 2060444. Okay, that'll be uh, 9 and 10. Uh, photo will be 9, poster 10. They'll be admitted. All right. The photo will be 11 and poster 12. They'll be admitted. Thank you. You may. <clears throat> may I have the witness step down? 
You may. Carefully, please. States exhibit number five. We talked about when you first came in um, and that you took your seat. Um, I'm not suggesting to you that this is the lighting conditions at the time you walk in. Its sole purpose is for us to get a layout of where the seats are within the theater. Okay? So, in looking at this, uh, you indicated that you kind of had a preference that you kind of like to be up, kind of like to be in the middle. Uh, and you also were familiar with the uh, uh, Cinebistro. All right. So first of all, uh, using uh, Space Exhibit number five, show us where the Cinebistro is. That would be this above this wall, and we up in here, these seats in the back. Right. And the general ticket holders from the general seating area do not have access to that. Not that I know of. All right. Now, we talked about that you had a favorite spot. Of course, now we know you can't get into the center bistro. In the general seating area, you indicated you were one row, <coughs> two rows down from the wall. Show us where the wall is. This is the wall, this tannish area. All right. And with the pointer, approximately where uh, your seats, the seats were. It's small, but we were not in the very back row, so we were one row up, and then approximately middle. And I'd Let me show you space exhibit number six. We talked about the, the uh, stairs that gave you access to go up uh, to find your seats. So using space exhibit number six, go ahead and orientate us. Where is the wall for the center bistro? All right. The stairs that you use to get up to your row. Mr. And Martin, if that is the second set, that the poster would be exhibit eight. The photo would be seven. I apologize. That's okay. I just want to make it clear for the record if that's the second group, which I think it is, from what yeah, I said. Yeah, it's the problem of eight of numbers. So. Yeah. All right, may I just have a moment then, Your Honor? This, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not suggesting that you take anything out of order. I'm just trying to clarify. Well, I. <coughs> I understand. And the photo on the screen is the same as the yep. poster. So okay. we're, we're seven yeah. and eight. So that's seven and eight, yep. Now that we have the relationship with the stairs to the wall, you were in front row? And the second one down from the back, so this row here. Now, when you arrived, we talked about the, the lighting conditions and what you could see. Uh, no problems going up the stairs. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Let me show you photo eight and post board nine. JPEG two zero six four four four. Now we got the general area for the the seating. We have you going up the aisles, uh, up the stairs. Now we need to get down the line. All right. So do you recognize uh, Stacey exhibit uh, number nine, the photo board that's up in front of you? I do, yes. All right. uh, orientated so we know where the wall for the center bistro is. Here. Right. And you were in what row from there? Not the first one, but the second one down here. Right. Now from this photograph, uh, do you recognize an item that is uh, depicted in the photograph uh, the item that you use when you eat popcorn? I do, yes. All right, what, what do you use when you eat popcorn? I always grab napkins, a All big right. handful of napkins. All right, and do you see that in the photograph? Yes. All right, and would you go ahead and show that to the jury, please? Be right by the drink. All right. Now, would you have that on your left side or your right side? I'll be on your left side. Okay, and that was your seat? That was my seat, yes. All right. Next to you, either to your right or your left, which side did your husband sit on? To my right. All right. Did he have a drink? We shared a drink, yes. All right. And do you see uh, a cup in that general facility that represents that drink? And that's right. The green right. And, the blue and that's where uh, Chad is seated. Yes, to the right of that. Let me show you Stacy Exhibit 11 and 12. Let's <coughs> use number 12. Alright, so <laughs> general stairs got you down the aisle. You mentioned to us in uh, the last exhibit that there was a tissue. Do you see the same tissue? Yes, right there. And the cup holder. Okay. And the cup that you mentioned? Yes. To my right. All right. Which seat were you in? This one right All right. Is that where Chad was? No, this was where I was. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's where you were. All right. Very good. Now, do you see an iPhone uh, depicted in the picture? I do, yes. Do you recognize that iPhone? It looks familiar, yes, sir. All right. Do you they believe? They look the same, but yes, sir. All right. Uh, based on the events that evening, do you believe that to be Chad's self? I do, yes. Is that the set cell phone that he was uh, using and uh, uh, not only at Wiregrass, but uh, after you first came in? Yes. And the popcorn bag on the floor here, was that yours? That was yes. Me and Chad shared it and I had set it down at my feet when we were done. Okay, very good. Now I'll pour it back and then you may take your seat and I'll put everything away. Got an idea of where you were in the theater. Uh, you told us about Chad's interaction with the gentleman, gentleman front. At the time that uh, your husband Chad was interacting with the gentleman in front of him, to your knowledge, was anyone seated behind you? Not that I know of. Time passes a little bit. Uh, does Chad leave the theater for some reason? He decides to go get some Twizzlers, so yes, he does. Some what? Twizzle, Twizzlers. And you got to lean a little bit forward. That, that is Twizzlers. Twizzlers, okay. <laughs> All right, about how long is he gone? A uh, few minutes, five minutes or less, I estimate. He eventually returns? He does, yes. 
while he is gone, to your knowledge, does anyone come in and sit behind you? Not that I am aware of. He comes back with the twizzlers? Yes. Whatever they are? Yes. Okay. Sits in the same seat? Yes. Let's talk about the, the cell phone. Once he comes back from the concession and has his, uh, replenished his snack supply, uh, does he begin to use the phone again? At some point, yes. Yeah. Is he making calls on the phone and talking to someone on the phone? No, no noise. You know, you've seen your husband uh, use the phone for, I'll call it entertainment purposes or whatever. We know we can scroll on it. When he does that, is it normally in his left or right hand, and how does he normally do it? Well, he's right-handed, so he would hold it in his left and type or scroll with his right hand. All right. And is that what you saw him doing? Yes. Do you know what he was looking at? Other than the football meme, I couldn't tell you what else he was doing now. <laughs> All right. I want to take you to the time that the that all the commercials are off and we start uh, previews. Uh, okay, <coughs> that, that time change when before the previews begin. Do you know if anyone came in behind and sat down behind you? I don't recall what time. I did not notice. Okay. After the preview started. Were you aware of anyone sitting behind you? At some point, yes. Okay. Talk about the previews a little bit. We've gone from when you first arrived and all the commercial stuff to the previews. Did the lighting condition change at all? It was constantly changing depending on the light from the screen, and yes, it possibly got a little dimmer. Right. At the time of the previews, uh, was, did the lights uh, uh, go down? I believe so, yes. While Chad was on the phone, could you see the, the light um, coming from his uh, screen? Yes. The preview start playing. Let's talk about that experience, okay? Does sound level within the theater change as far as the audio that's being um, uh, played for your enjoyment? Yes. It goes up? I would say so, yes. Okay. After that change, uh, did you and Chad have an opportunity to speak with one another? Could you carry on a normal conversation? That's oh, what yes. I'm asking. Yes. With that change in level? Yes. With that change of level, can you tell us whether or not you could still hear other people talking? Yes. When we talked about could you hear other people talking, uh, could you determine whether or not they were four or five seats away, ten seats away? I'm trying to get a distance, you know, based on chairs. Yes. Uh, you could hear the people talking? Yes. At some point, you could. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Fair enough. The previews are playing, so we have the audio. Now we have the lighting. The lighting went down a little bit, right? Yes. Okay. Were you still able to see Chad next to you? Yes. Uh, could you see the gentleman in front of you? Yes. Uh, were you able to see the people that were several uh, chairs away from you in, your, in the same row? Yes. Uh, with that lighting condition, could you determine whether or not they were male or female? Yes. Could you determine, um, in a general sense, the color of the clothes? Yes. The uh, color of the hair if they weren't wearing a cap or something like that? Yes. Okay. Now, the gentleman in front of you, you could see, right? Yes. As people, were people, tell us whether or not people were still entering the theater as the previews were being played. Yes. Could you see them come in? Yes. As they, and you showed us the stairs going up each side. Mm -hmm. You were in the middle. Yes. Whether they were to your right or to your left as they came up, could you 
uh, tell uh, whether or not they were male or female? Yes. To the general set? Yes. Uh, okay. The people that were patrons in there, uh, could you still see body movements? Let me just give you an example. I'm not saying it occurred. Just as an example of what I'm looking for, if someone's sitting in a chair and an arm is moved like eating a popcorn, taking a drink, or turning this way. I'm looking for body movements. Could you see people's body movements? Yes. Okay. There comes a point in time where you have the sensation, feeling, sense, whatever, that someone has, has sat down behind you, right? Yes. Tell us how you made that determination. Now I know someone's behind me. What took place? What did you hear? What, what was it that led you to that conclusion? You, um, I heard a statement that was made and you also just sensed you, I could, out of my peripheral, see somebody very close to my right and behind me. Okay. Just you, just kind of sense them. You just, based on the sound, you know that they're close, and you just can tell that they're close to you. Okay. Do you know how many people sat in behind you? I was only aware of the one. At the time that that person sat behind you were the previews for movies, movie trailers playing. Yes. Was the lighting what uh, we talked about uh, a few minutes ago. Yes. Which included whether whatever ambient light was flickering on the screen and bouncing into the theater. Correct. But you said change depending on the scene. Correct. After you became aware that someone was behind you, we had the previews playing, was your husband, Chad, was his phone out? Yes. All right. Uh, was he talking on the phone? No. Making a call? All right. Did he have it like you explained in his left hand? Yes. What did you see him doing? Just the light low. He wasn't holding it up or waving it around. It was just kind of lower in his lap. I want to take you to the point of time where you are aware of whoever is behind you uh, having contact with you. Okay? That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So having that as a reference point, and you know when the, the, you only know one person came in and sat down behind you, and to that where there was, we'll get to the type of contact, but where there was contact, you know about how long that was? I'm sorry, from what point until the contact? First sit down behind yeah. you. Okay. And then first contact. Okay. About no, I have to clarify. I don't recall them coming in and exactly when they sat down behind me. Um, all I know is the very first contact when he, he was. Okay. You just knew there was someone behind you and then all of a sudden right. there was contact. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Let's talk about that contact. First, I want to talk about your, your observations visually, and then we'll talk about what you heard. All right, okay. we're going to separate them. You indicated to us uh, where the uh, the tissue is is where you were seated, right? Correct. Okay. And Chad was to your right. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about visually what you saw. Explain to us. We see 
where your chair is, we see where Chaz is, and of course there's a little bit of a gap. Which eye did you get the peripheral vision of someone was there? On my right. On your right. So it will be towards where the cup is. In between me and Chad, yes, in front of the cup. Okay. All right. To your, to your recollection, uh, was your chair touched at all? Not that I recall, no. All right. Um, at that point, did you know whether or not it was male or female? Yes. All right, and, and visually, how were you able oh, to? Vis visually, no. Okay, I'm sorry. visually, no. Visually, no. Just someone, a human head came into that area. Yes. All right. All right. At some point in time, you heard something from behind you. Correct. What was said? A demand to put the phone away. Just based on your life experience, uh, did you draw any conclusions as to whether or not the voice was male or female? Yes, male. Okay. Let's talk about the, the words that were spoken. Okay. The words were spoken were what? Yes. What, 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 did, what did the man say? What were the words? Put your phone away now or something very, very similar to that. Words to that effect. Yes. Okay. Not those exact words. Right. Not verbatim, but you need to put your phone away or put your phone away. The message. That definitely that's what the message was. Yes. yes. All right. Now you you had an occasion to hear the exchange between Chad and the gentleman in front, right? Correct. And then you heard the voice uh, behind you, right? Correct. Uh, as far as the uh, character and the tone of the comparing the two uh, <coughs> was the conversation Chad had with the man in front that tone of conversation was that different from what you heard from behind you very different yes okay and how was it different it was just rude it was demanding it was like it was an order it wasn't you know, excuse me, or would you mind, or an explanation that, you know, the light is distracting. It was just very matter of fact, you need to do this. Based on your peripheral vision, how long did you have that person in your vision? You know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, you know, that kind of thing. Do you know? Several seconds, yes. Probably more than five to ten, but it's hard to gauge. All right. Did your, res did your husband respond uh, to what the man said? Yes, he did. Listen real close, okay? When your husband responded, did you still have the, the man's head in your peripheral vision? I can't f say for certain. Okay. How did your husband respond? What words did he say? He says, what's your problem? The movie hasn't even started yet. You know, I'm not making any noise. Right. Not verbatim, but a kind message. of blowing, blowing him off, just kind of basically not not turning around, not acknowledging well, him. Well, let me, let me just take you through that a little bit. That's okay. what was said. Yes. Did uh, your husband, Chad, ever turn back towards where the voice came from? No. Can you tell us whether or not uh, he made that statement while still looking at the phone, watching the previews, what was he doing? Still facing forward, I, I, I believe on his phone. Okay. But you're not sure? Just facing forward, I just know he But you know he didn't turn around? Right, correct. All right. Did your husband use any profanity? No. Uh, we refer to them as F-bombs, any F-bombs being directed towards the, the man behind you no. by your husband? No. Did he raise the voice to what you would consider to be, in your life experience, a normal talking level? Yes. A little bit? Yes. It was louder than what you would expect in a movie theater, which is a whisper. It was louder than that. Okay. Do 
do you know if the man behind you responded to your husband's comments? He did, yes. Okay. Was that immediately after your husband said what you just told us? Yes. About how long, again, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, you know, I'm talking, how long was it between where Chad made the statements and then the man behind you responded? Seconds. It was pretty immediate. Okay. Do you recall what the man said? Pretty much the same thing as the first time. You need to put your phone away. Okay. The tone or demeanor, had that changed at all from the first time the man spoke? No, it had not. Was the man behind you cursing? No. Uh, well, and yelling is so subjective, but I mean, was the, was, was the voice louder than what would be normal to talk in that environment? Yes. It, it was that level? Yes. It wasn't screaming, yelling? Right, but it was louder than a whisper. Okay. Right. So we have the first uh, word spoken by the man behind. We have the response. Mm -hmm by your husband and then a response to that. Yes. Okay, that's where we're at. Let's talk about what you were thinking at that point. Um, based on the tones of the conversation, the, the words that were spoken, um, what were you thinking? Were you, I'm, were you afraid, scared that the man behind you was going to do something or anyone's going to do something? That's what I'm trying to get. What were your thoughts? No, I was just kind of taken aback at how we were approached, but nothing stood out other than, oh, great, they're bickering. Okay. Neither one of them cursing? No. Well, I take you to the point where um, you get the sensation or become aware that the man behind you has gotten up and left. I want to use that as our time frame, okay? Prior to you feeling that, uh, were there any other uh, words by the man behind you directed towards your husband? Yes. And what was that? He said, do I need to go get management? We've been talking about the, the tone and the, and the demeanor of the, of the spoken word when it was spoken. Uh, had that changed at all uh, when you compare it to the first two times the man behind you spoke? It had not let up, so it was the same. Yes. It was the same? Did your husband uh, respond to that uh, comment? He did, yes. And what did he say? He just said, do what you need to do. At that point, was your, do you know whether or not your husband's phone was still out and visible? Was he using it like he was before? I believe so, yes. Okay. At the time that your husband made that response to what the man said behind him, did he physically turn and look at that individual? No. All right. Do you recall where he, his sight picture would be? Was it in his lap, up at the screens? We're trying to get a feel for where he was, where his attention was. Always forward. Mm -hmm. Did you have a sense after that comment, do I need to go get the manager, that that individual left? Yes. What was it about the environment, what did you hear, see, that led you to the conclusion that he left? You just, or was getting up to leave. Yeah, you just sense it, and then I actually saw him going down the stairs after he got out of his aisle and started um, going down the stairs. Okay. T 
talk a little bit, but after the, the third comment, did you get this, the sense that your husband um, was getting frustrated, agitated, um, annoyed? Yes, I think they both were. Yes, I would say so. Okay. So you finally see him go down the aisle, right? There's a time period till the gentleman comes back. I want to talk about what you and Chad were doing okay. while he was absent. Okay? Okay. Right. Now, at that point, um, had you and Chad uh, began to enjoy the, the movie experience with the trailers? Yes. Was Chad still on the phone? No. All right. It, do you know if the screen light was still on? How, I'm trying to figure on out. On his how, phone, not on yeah, the movie. Yeah, the, yeah, that's right. <laughs> right okay. The iPhone screen. Uh, did yeah. you still see that uh, screen light? It was for a period of time after th the man left the theater, but not, not for long. Okay. Shortly after, it was turned off. Once a, the, you no longer saw the light, the light went out. Do you know where... Uh, what Chad did with the phone? What does it have? It keep it in his pocket, back pocket, keep it in the lap, just hold it in his hand. Just kind of hold it, it in your hand, setting it on the lap, usually. Okay. Did you actually see it, or you just know that's his routine? That's just his routine. His routine, okay. And I did not see any movement to indicate that he had put it in a pocket, so All right. I came to that conclusion. All right. And I guess one of the things that uh, I need to put in, in the timeline, if you will, do you recall that there was a notice on the screen asking the patrons to please put away their phones? I'm aware of it, but not from that specific movie. I can't say that I paid any attention to it that day, but I'm aware of, you know, silence your phone or, you know, put it away. Yeah. Okay. You indicated that uh, when the man left, comment works to the fact, do what you got to do. So let's talk about Chad's, uh, if he's, let's do it this way. While the man was gone, did Chad make any comments to you that would be... All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a, a short 10-minute recess, so uh, please remember my instructions, and um, they, can, they can go to the jury pool room if you wish, uh, but um, I just wanted to mention that there are designated restrooms for you guys. Did you discuss that with them at all, Deputy? Okay, um, did you give them the code? Did anybody give him the code, the employee restroom? No, I didn't. 
Okay. Okay. Well, um, the, the um, designated restrooms for jurors is either back there or in the jury pool room, okay? And um, remember my instructions during the recess. Uh, deputy, it's your call where you want them. You want them back here or you want them in the jury pool room? Okay. Just head back to the jury pool room um, in 10 minutes. All right? Thank you.
All right. Mrs. Olson's back on the stand. You're still under oath. I'll tell her, I'll tell her that in front of the jury, though. Um, are we ready? Yes. Oh, really? I'm there? Good. You guys are good. Coordination. Thank you. You can be seated. Thank you. Were you all able to abide by my instructions during the recess? All righty. Then we'll get started again. Mrs. Olson is still on the stand, and you're still under oath. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Martin. Before the break, we were at that period in time that the man behind you had left. Yes. Uh, and you and... Uh, Mr. Olson were uh, in the theater and we were talking about uh, what was going on while the man was gone. And I want to discuss with you, was there any conversation or comments made by Mr. Olson after the man left that would suggest to you that Mr. Olson had any sort of animosity at that time that would result in him acting out in any way? He did not say anything, no. You're going to have to talk up a little bit. He did not say anything, no. Okay. Could you tell whether or not he was sitting there fuming and being agitated? You know your husband, so. Right. No, he seemed to be back to normal. We thought it was over. Was as as the gentleman went down the stairs and you saw go downstairs, your husband uh, did he make any comments about derogatory comments about the man walking down the stairs is going to go complain about him? No. The man's gone for about three minutes. We've discussed what happened during that time period. Did you become aware of when the, when the man returns? Yes. How did you become aware of it? Again, he's behind us, and he makes a statement. Okay. Before that statement is, is made, do you see the man coming up the aisles that we... Not that I recall paying any attention. No. Okay. Uh, you weren't focused on waiting for that man to come back? No. To your knowledge, did your husband make any statements to you that would lead you to believe that he was focused and waiting for the man to come back? No statements. All right. Let's get to the point where uh, the individual has returned and you indicated that uh, there was something said. Uh, we're going to break it down uh, as much as we can to try to put it in a proper time frame and sequence. So as the, uh, at some point in time, the same voice that you heard, that man said something. Yes. Let's start there. What was said? He says, I see you put your phone away now that I went to get management. Words to no, that not effect? Not verbatim, right, but words to that. And was the phone away? Yes, it was totally away. Out of your peripheral vision, since Mr. Olson is sitting, sitting, sitting right next to you, uh, do you uh, sense, feel, or see any type of body movement by Mr. Olson that would indicate that he would be turning to his right and focused on activity that was to his right? Not at this point of time. 
before the, I'm, I'm talking about before the statement is made. Right, no. Okay. Do you recall any type of body movement whatsoever by your husband before that statement is made? No. Did your husband make any statement to that man before that statement was made? No. Now we have the statement made. Does your husband respond? He does, yes. Okay. And how does he respond? Again, with what's your problem? Like. Okay. Anything else? I know I'm, we're feeling, why is this continuing going on? But no, I don't think any other, that was a more of a feel, my feeling. And his statement was just, what is your problem? Like, All right. Was there any cussing by your husband? No. Any F-bombs by your husband? No. The man behind you, was that man cussing? No. Any uh, uh, F-bombs, threats by the man behind? No. Okay. When the individual made the statement about words to the fact, you know, I see you put your phone away, I'm just paraphrasing a little bit. Uh, comparing that uh, statement when he made it as far as the tone and the demeanor of that statement, had that changed at all from the first three times that individual made contact with your, hus your no, husband? No, it was not a nice statement. When your husband responded to the statement, where's the fact, see, you put your phone away, at that point, did he turn in his seat? Towards, you know, towards where the voice was coming from. During that statement? No, after the statement was made. Oh, after you, the you, statement and, was made, yes. All right, I'm asking you, once the statement was made, um, did your husband's turn towards the direction where that voice was coming from. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. All right, now we have those two, um, the statement made and the response based on the uh, tone and the demeanor of the, of the voices that you heard, uh, what were you thinking? Why is this still going on? The phone was away. This should be over. Did you sense uh, at that point that uh, the demeanor of both your husband and the man behind you uh, was somewhat similar as far as um, either agitation or whatever you want to call it? Was your husband frustrated at that point? I would say so. I'd say they both were, yes. All right. Uh, Say they were both angry at that point? Fair statement, yes. All right. You were there, listening to it. Think they were mad at each other? Probably, yes. Both of them? Yes, both of them. Do you recall any type of statement by your husband about texting? Yes, I do. All right. In relation to the statements that we have, see your phone away, that, when did that take place? After he returned from getting management, mm -hmm. and he stated, I see you put your phone away now, that I went to get management. Chad again said, what is your problem? And he did state that he was checking on a message about his daughter.
we're going to take this real slow, okay? okay? So now we have that statement, right? Yes. Does there come a point in time when your husband begins to change his position in the seat? Yes. Okay. Is that turning around and looking or beginning to stand up? Beginning to stand up. At that point in time, uh, did you know where your husband's cell phone was? I did not see it, but I assumed it was still in his hand. Okay. Either as your husband was standing up or after he stood up, did your husband make any other statements? Not that I recall, no. As your husband was standing up, what were you doing? I sensed, I, I noticed him standing up, so I started to stand up a little behind him. All right. Well, as soon as he started to stand, you started to stand. Why? I just was embarrassed. I thought it was going to create a, more of a commotion where more people were going to hear and see what was going on, these two men bickering. And what was your intention? My intention was to, I didn't want to contribute by yelling or shouting or trying to get his attention that way, so my intention was just to tap him on his shoulder or just to, it's not worth it, come on. Okay. Now, we've seen the height difference between you two, right? Yes. All right. Yes. You were, you were seated in your, in your seat. Yes. Uh, your husband began to stand first, and, and then you followed with that process. Yes, but I know we got to take it slow. It's almost painfully slow. I understand, uh, but I'm trying to get two body movements and where they are in relation to one another. Okay. Um, as your husband begins to stand, you began to do what with your left hand as you're coming out of your seat? Reach over. It's kind of awkward. It's kind of awkward, you know, the seats. Mm -hmm. So I just. As I'm standing, I reach over just to tap his arm or tap him. Wherever you could touch him. Right. My right arm was holding on, and just that's just what happened. It wasn't planned. It just, that was what was natural. Okay. <coughs> As you're standing up, I want to know where your focus was. You get up. When you get up, are you turning your body, looking one way, turning it, looking the other way, or turning, looking up at the screen? I'm trying to, you know, when you get up. Right. Straight forward, facing the screen. Yeah. Can you see your husband peripherally where he is? Yes. Okay. But your focus is, I mean, you're getting up. As I'm up. standing up, it's straight ahead, and eventually I just turn my head to the right slightly but my body does not really shift. As you are standing up and your arm starts to move over, do you feel a sensation in your hand? Yes. Describe that sensation. It felt like my hand was on fire. Just, just fire. It felt like my hand was blown off. At the time, contemporaneous, same time that you felt that sensation in your hand, did you hear a loud noise? I did, yes. Are you familiar with uh, the sound of a firearm? Not on TV and all that stuff, but I mean in real life. Yes, limited, but yes. Right. But it was, it was loud. It was, yes. Okay. Once you feel that sensation in your hand, do you continue your process of standing up? Yes. Do you, can you tell us whether or not, uh, at, 
you're, you're coming up off the seat bottom as you're coming up. Were your legs locked back when you felt the pain? Were you still, your knees not locked uh, in that half sitting position? I'm trying to get to where you were. It happened so fast, I, I was just in motion on my way up. Probably pretty close to being fully up, but maybe not standing straight with my legs locked. Okay. Once you heard the loud sound and you felt the burning sensation in your hand, do you continue to stand? Yes. Once you have finished the process of standing, what is your next observation? Chad. He takes a couple steps and he collapses. Okay. Are you concerned about your hand or your husband? Oh, my husband. I knew he was way worse than me. All right. Did you forego some immediate attention to your hand and concentrate on your husband for, for a short period of time? Yes, yes. My focus was on him at that point. Right. We're going to take you back to the process of standing up out of the chair. You're standing up and you're coming up. Right. From your peripheral, peripheral vision or anything, do you get any sensation that your husband had extended his hand towards the row behind him and, and brought it back? No. Did you get anything sensation from your peripheral vision uh, that his body at all broke the plane of the back of the chair and, and reached over with his hand and then came back? No. When you finally had your hand in a position where you felt the, the burning pain, just prior to that, did your hand ever come in contact with, with consistent with someone leaning forward and coming back, you know, that oscillation of the hand. Did you ever feel that? No. <clears throat> now, prior to the events that you just described, did your husband ever uh, jump up and put his feet in the seat bottom of the seat? No. Did your husband use the F-bomb in any way directed towards the man that you recall? No. Prior to the sensation in your hand? No. Recall any statement to the effect, uh, mind your own F-business? No. Any statement at all, stay the hell out of my face? No. By your husband? No. Prior to the time that your hand had that burning sensation, were you aware that uh, a bag of popcorn had been retrieved from um, behind you and tossed back into that area? I was not aware, no. As you're coming up out of your seat and stand, and Chad, you know, preceded and coming up, is that the only time that he stood up? The only time, yes. The only time that he stood up, you were coming up with him? Yes. 
That's it. That's it. Did you ever see your husband stand up and turn and face towards that area behind him? I, prior to the Yeah, the prior shot. to the sensation no, in your hand. No, not prior to, no. No, okay. Did you ever, ever see your husband standing in his aisle facing back towards uh, the aisle and do some type of motion. No, not from where I was looking. Okay. You knew that your husband had been hurt? I did, yes. Okay. You mentioned to us your concerns was towards him. Somehow did you make your way down one row so that you could go to where your husband was? Somehow I got down there, but I don't. I it's assume I had to climb over the seat, because, but I don't recall how I got down there. But yes, I did get down out of the aisle. Once you were on that aisle, uh, were you able to obtain some type of wrap, bandage, something to put on your hand? There was a gentleman that, that assisted me, yes. At that point in time, did you see uh, a gentleman sitting in the last row, you know, up against the wall where the beast row was, that was directly behind your seat? At that point of time, no. Did there come a point in time when you did have an opportunity to see that individual? Yes, I did. And that individual was sitting in the seat right behind yours? Correct. When you saw that individual sitting in the seat right behind her, yours, did it appear to be a man of similar statute as you saw go down the, the aisle leaving for the manager? Yes. All right. And based on those observations and seeing where he was seated, um, did you have uh, reason to believe that uh, that was the man that was continually talking to, to uh, Mr. Olson and yourself? And the color of his shirt, yes. Now, if, if you see that man in the courtroom today, I'm going to ask you to point him out and describe what he's wearing for the court. Yes. I was going to say the middle, but there's two gentlemen in the middle of this table here. It is the gentleman second to the my, my right. He's wearing a, looks to be a grayish coat with a white shirt and a swirly tie, glasses, grayish hair. At this table. Your Honor, I have the record reflect she's identified the defendant in this case, Curtis Reeves. Yeah. You know, at this time, I'm going to use various. Uh, pieces of evidence that have already been admitted. I need about two minutes to set up the video uh, and a poster board, uh, if I may do that now. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
this side. I'm going to do that at least once today. Yes. Do you have something on the screen? I hope so. Is it supposed to come up on the other screen? Yes, sir. Did someone turn that off? Is it time now? I don't know. I have it set on. No signal? Technology. Is it plugged in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> well, I guess we can rearrange again. What's that? I guess we can rearrange again. 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. Let me uh, let me just try to reset this and see if it works. Yeah. Changed before it said DVD. Oh, that's what it now it says that again. <coughs> it's just rearranged. May I run? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Take you to where Mr. Reed is. <coughs> you see that part of the uh, video? Yes, I do. Okay. Now, at that point, I'm going to run it backwards just a little bit. As Mr. Reed is walking in, at what point do you get a sensation that someone's behind you? Do you know? When he leans forward and okay. makes his very first comment. All right. <coughs> Over that. Presence is when you first felt uh, the presence of someone behind. So, if you would, let's bring uh, Stacy to it. Let me walk around here. We're going to use this photo board so we can get an idea of where everyone sees this. Okay. Please uh, show the jury what seat you were in, and the man behind you, what seat was he in? And your husband? All right, now as you watch the video, as the gentleman leans forward, does he come right behind your seat or off to his right? He comes right, his face appears to be right in here, so to my right and to Chad's left, right in here. Okay, and the first contact is what? You, you need to turn your phone off. Okay. There's a response. What's your problem? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have coming back. And then within seconds, there's another contact. Yes. Now, again, the same positioning, leaning right. in between. At that point, are you able to see the, out of your peripheral vision, um, the head coming into view? No, just the first time. All right. And the second time, the words were? From what? Mr. Reeves? Yeah. Um, the same, but you need to put your phone away. In the same manner, tell them we discovered this. Yes. Okay. Now there's a point where uh, he leaves. Yes. All right. Okay. 
Now, what is going on during that time period? We have the two contacts. Is your husband still on the phone? Uh, uh, when I say on the phone, I, I'm not talking. So the phone's still out. Still out. I'm sure he's distracted from the phone. We're you know, more focused on the conversation that he's having than on his phone. But yes, it's still out, whether the screen timed off or what, I can't say. But, but yes. Okay. <coughs> would you agree or disagree that your husband was just ignoring the mail? Blowing him off. I would agree. We then have the third contact that you talked about. So as we, as we watch uh, the video, again, uh, show us the direction in which uh, Mr. Reese is leaning towards your husband. This seat in between me and Chad. On this particular incident, after your peripheral vision, are you able to see the man's head? I don't see his head again, no. You just hear what? What do you hear the man say? Do I need to go get management? Is there a response by your husband? Yes. And what does he say? Do what you need to do, or do whatever you feel you need to do. You get the sense that he leaves? Yes. As he is getting up, does he make any other comments? Not that I'm aware of. Does your husband make any other comments? No. As, do you see him, do you turn and look and see the man leave at all? No, not at this point. And does your husband turn and look? No. There comes a point in time when he comes back, right? Correct. We talked about this before as he's coming back. Uh, do you know precisely at what point a comment is made by Mr. Reed? He's behind us, but I don't know if he's sitting or standing or where, what he's doing. I don't look. As Mr. Reeves comes back and begins to take his seat, do you notice any type of body movement by your husband to his left, to his right, behind? No, we don't move. Okay. Uh, Exactly when the statement that Mr. Reed made, uh, you don't know whether he was standing or sitting. I do not know if Reeves was listening. As we see uh, Mr. Reeves come back, and this is camera 12, um, nothing by your husband at all? No. As he's walking by? No. No. And as he takes his seat, he's going to take a seat right behind you? Yes? Yes.
You mentioned to us that your husband stood up one time. Okay. And as and you were simultaneously going up with him. A little few seconds later, yes. Right. And as you're standing up is when you were shot. Yes. <coughs> Do you ever see your husband standing and turning towards Mr. Reeves and throwing his cell phone? No. Do you hear any cussing, swearing, or F-bombs by your husband? No. All right. Do you recall any type of encroachment in your space by Mr. Reeves uh, before your husband began to stand up? No. Okay. At this point is where you explain our, that both yeah. were mad, angry, frustrated. It's, fair to say. it's hard to say some, what someone's feeling, but yes. I, yeah. I, you I got the I'm impression sure. that these two guys, yes. both of them were equally. Yeah. Okay. There comes a point in time, like you said, when he stands up and you stand up with him. As, as you're standing up and you're beginning to reach over, we talked about whether or not you ever felt the oscillation of the hand, you know, as someone's moving their body like this. No, I did not. He was standing, standing up. All right. Were, and were you aware of whether or not your husband, in fact, reached across the aisle behind him? I was not aware of him. All right. And that was the time that you were standing up? I was facing forward, and then I was looking at, to my right to chat. I never looked behind me at that point. At any time, did you hold, restrain, body hug, or whatever that would give someone the impression that you were holding someone back that was in a rage? No, I had no need to. No. When we talk about um, the, as you're getting up, as you're standing, when the fire, when you hear the loud noise, that is when you feel the burning sensation in your hand. Yes. And you hadn't even gotten up out of your seat yet. Just there, okay. Okay. Right. On my way up. Okay. Once you were up, you knew that Chad was, was hurt? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Using the uh, poster behind you, show the jury where you were standing. Where am I seat? Okay. And where was Chad? In front of the seat. After you both began to stand up and you were fully standing, you knew you were hurt, you knew he was hurt. Where was he? He was still <coughs> here and start stumbling down the aisle away from me. Okay. And what are you doing at that point? Your hands burning? Figuring out what happened. I, I mean, I knew a shot had rang out, but I didn't know where he was shot or what, 
really what our injuries were other than my hand felt like it was gone off of my arm and I'm watching him collapse so I know it's bad it was just shock I think panic okay now as as you see your husband walking away somehow it's a blur you make it to the other eye yes I have away from it I realize the concern, but did you make any phone calls as you were trying to contact anyone? What was going on on that aisle below? You can show where it is. That aisle that what were you doing before you made it to the end where you could see your husband? Yes, a gentleman had helped me, gave me something, napkins, something to wrap my hand, and I tried to contact my mother to let her know that something serious had happened and she needs to get over here. And I guess, I'm, I guess I'm not making sense. So the gentleman takes the phone and talks to my mother. And the same with Chad's mother. And then I knew I needed to get it together because I wanted to go see Chad and kind of figure out what was going on at the time. But I know from prior experiences that if he saw me panicking, he would be more worried about me. And I didn't want that, so I pulled it together enough to get back to him in front of him where I can look over the aisle at him on the ground. And I see his eyes were just glazed over, and I knew at that moment. But I tell him, Chad, hey, Lexi, need you please hang, hang in there. We need you. And then I started to lose it, so I walked back away from the scene, from not the scene, but from where I could see him. And I went back to the gentleman that had been helping me. Other people were helping your husband? Yes, they were doing CPR work at SSU. Okay. Please take your seat. Okay. I have a moment. Yeah, can you go with the videos? Yes, uh, I still have some more testimony. Okay. Oh, wait, let's go on. Sorry. 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 Manny, could you help me with this, please, sir? Thank you. I'm going to show you a series of photographs, and uh, the first one I I show you is uh, the state mark for identification K JPEG two zero six seven two nine six. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Is that a photograph of you? It is of me. Yes. All right. Taken a couple of days after this incident? Yes. Right. Let me show you Stace Exhibit 
number L, marked for identification, JPEG number 2067299. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that a photograph of the hand that uh, you felt the burning sensation? My left hand, yes. Let me show you state's exhibit number M, marked for identification. Do you recognize that? Yes. JPEG number 2067305. Is that your hand? It is, yes. And does that reflect the entry to your hand uh, where you felt the burning sensation? Yes. Let me show you state's exhibit number N as in Nancy, marked for identification. JPEG number 2067347. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that a photograph of your hand? Yes. Taken the same time as the very first photographs we talked about? Yes. Let me show you state's exhibit number O, marked for identification, JPEG number 2067344. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Is that a photograph of your hand? Yes. And does it represent the injury uh, as it was approximately two days after the incident? Yes. Let me show you state's exhibit number P, uh, Mark for identification. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. All right. JPEG number two zero six seven three three two. Does that uh, photograph uh, depict uh, the injury to your hand uh, two days, approximately two days after the incident? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I would move. Um, Photograph in order as states exhibits 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Any objection? No objection. They'll be admitted. May I publish? You may. We know that after this incident, um, you were treated. You were treated. Yes. All right. What did you finally realize happened to your hand? That my finger was pretty much dangling and holding on just by a string, my ring finger. All right. Were you taken to the hospital? Yes. Did you receive treatment? I did. Yes. Did there come a point in time? Uh, that the treatment included surgery. Yes. How long ago? How long ago? How long after the incident uh, did you have surgery on your on your finger? My best estimate is within a week or so after. Okay. Uh, do you know? I don't want to say what type of surgery. What What did they have to do in order to repair your finger the best they could? Um. Well, the bone and everything in the finger was so destroyed that they had to take a chunk of bone from my wrist and put it in my finger in order to reconstruct it. So there are pins or metal bolts, not sure the correct terminology for them, um, that put my finger back together. Okay. The injury that you received um, from your finger um, At the time you received that injury, was your hand in front of your husband's chest? It was, yes. And he was injured by the same projectile? Yes. Okay. I know it sounds silly, but I'm going to ask you. <coughs> you didn't consent to being shot in the hand, right? No. All right, so it was against your will. It was, yes. Let's talk a little bit about the injury it's, itself. The, um, the mobility that you now have in your finger, is it the same as it was prior to January 13, 2014, or different? Different. How is it different? Well, I've lost all movement in my top joint, and I've lost most of my movement and flexibility in my second joint, um, resulting in me not being able to grip things and just constant pain when I touch it the wrong way or hit it on something. Right. Let's talk about the way your finger looked prior to January 13th as opposed to after January 13th. Is there any different 
and the way your finger looked after being shot. Yes. All right, and tell us how it's different. It's crooked in okay. multiple places. Um, again, scarred, lots of different tissue and scarring around it, shorter, not as long as it was prior. All right. Rudy Director, may I publish these now? You may. I'm going to direct your attention now to the. Uh, 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 we're doing that because of the shadow of the <laughs> Before you is Stace Exhibit number 13. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Yes, and I who do. Who is that? That's me. Okay. Taken approximately uh, two days after the incident? Correct. The white material on your hand, what is that? Gauze. Had surgery been performed at that point in time? Not at this point. I'm going to show you state's exhibit number 14. Can you give me a minute to orientate it? There we go. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, I do. Right. Is that a close-up of the hand and the bandaging? Yes. Again, before surgery? Yes. Let me show you stakes exhibit number 15. Is that a photograph of your hand on top of a piece of gauze? Yes. Which finger was damaged? My left ring finger. And is that the way the injury appears uh, prior to your surgery? Yes. And is it that injury that uh, resulted from being shot on the 13th? Yes. Let me show you stakes exhibit number 16. You recognize that photograph? Yes. All right. Again, is that a close-up of the back of your hand? Yes. We see there's some red marks on the back side of your of your left hand. Prior to January 13th, 2014, did you have those red marks on the back of your hand? No. Let me show you state's exhibit number. 17, there we go. It's a photograph of your hand palm up uh, looking at uh, your ring finger. Again, do you recognize that photograph? Yes. And does that photograph represent the injury to your finger? Yes. Prior to surgery? Yes. And finally, state's exhibit number 18. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Again, it's a photograph of uh, palm up uh, on a piece of gauze. Uh, is that your ring finger? It is, yes. And does that represent the injury that you sustained from being shot on January 13, 2014? Yes. Yeah. I have just a moment to cancel. Your Honor, at this time, may the witness step down and, uh, and, and approach the jury box so that they can see the, uh, the damage and the disfigurement to her finger. Uh, yes, you may. So what I'm going to ask you to do is kind of use these squares as your boundary marker, okay? And if you would, if you would just kind of do the shuffle, 
and then uh, show them uh, your, your finger. You guys can sing. So you can sing. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross. Thank you. Well, I'd like to try to clear up so I understand the, the sequence of events um, inside the theater. Number one, uh, Mr. Reeves tells Mr. Olson something to the effect of turn off your phone, right? Correct. And at that point, Mr. Olson blows Mr. Reeves off, right? It, yes. He says something back, but pretty much ignores. Like, okay. doesn't so, turn around to engage, just makes a comment over his... So what is Mr. Olson? I know you don't remember exact words for anyone, right? right? We can agree with that. Right. What is your recollection of, um, not the, the exact wording, but what did Mr. Olson say back? What was uh, your impression of that? What's your problem? The movie hasn't even started yet. S something about the lights or, you know, no, no noise being made. Okay. Then there was a second request or, or conversation or or at least communication concerning turning off the phone because it was still on, right? Correct. And that's from Mr. Reeves. Right. And so what is Mr. Olson's response? Mind your own business. Okay. And then at that point, um, by now, Mr. Olson's beginning to get annoyed, right? I'd say they both are. Well, let's talk about that. Um, certainly you are familiar with Mr. Olson, being his wife of seven years. Yes. We can agree that you weren't familiar with Mr. Reeves at all, right? Having never met the gentleman before. Correct. Okay. So for sure you knew that Mr. Olson was annoyed, right? Yes. Okay. And then there was a communication. Well, I guess I have to go to the manager, manager that sort of thing. Do I have that right? Correct. Now, at that point, um, Mr. Olson answers something to the effect of, well, do what you have to do. Exactly, yes. So between the second conversation, at least, and this one, Mr. Olson is annoyed, right? I'd say so, yes. And certainly hearing I'm going to the manager also annoyed him, right? Yes. Now when Mr. Reeves gets back, and I know you said it, that Mr. Reeves wasn't loud, right? Correct. They weren't whispering, but they weren't shouting either. Right, because in your mind, whispering is the proper way to communicate in a movie theater. That's mostly what you hear when you go, yes. And so it wasn't loud in terms of Mr. Reeves, what he, Mr. Reeves' voice. It's louder. I, yes, I'd say it was kind of loud, yes. Okay, so now you're saying it was loud. You know, previously he testified this afternoon that his, Mr. Reeves' voice wasn't loud. Okay. And again, let me try to explain. In a movie theater, a whisper would probably be a normal voice that I would expect from people and that I would use. However, it was louder than that. So it was loud compared to what I would expect, but not shouting or screaming. Louder than a whisper? Yes. Okay. Somewhere in between, shouting and a whisper. And so uh, Mr. Olson was also at the same level or higher than that? I would say they were both the same. Okay. Now, Mr. Reeves leaves, comes back, and now there's um, some more communication, correct? That's what you described? Yes. Now, at this point, um, Mr. Olson is, has already been annoyed going into it when Mr. Reeves comes back and communicates to him, telling him something to the effect of, I see you put your phone away. Certainly, that made uh, Mr. Olson angry. 
I can't speak to how he felt, but I would say that they had both been annoyed, angry. Yes. Well, now you're telling me you can't speak to how Mr. Olson felt, but earlier you were able to tell me that a stranger that you never met before was annoyed. So was Mr. Olson angry when Mr. Reeves came back and said, I see you put the phone away. I'm sorry, I went to the manager. I'm sorry, can you repeat your question again? You're telling me that you don't remember or you don't know if, if uh, Mr. Olson was angry or not. But earlier you were able to tell that a stranger's annoyed, right? That's what you told me earlier. Yes. And so your own husband, when Mr. Reeves gets back and says something to the effect of, I see you put your phone away, sorry I went to the manager, Mr. Olson is angry at that point, right? I wouldn't say any angrier, but yes, I would say that they were the same annoyance as I couldn't see anything escalate in annoyance, but yes, I would say that he was probably annoyed and angry just as Mr. Reeves appeared to me. Well, again, Mr. Reeves didn't raise his voice, right? And neither did Chad. Okay, but you know Mr. Olson, so you know when he's angry, right? Yes. You don't know Mr. Reeves, no. right? Okay. Now, um, at some point, there's um, a kind of an escalation. I think that uh, Mr. Olson says something about. Um, what is your problem? I was checking on a message or checks for my daughter, something to that effect? Well, you say an escalation, but no, I would not categorize it as an escalation. I would say it was more of a de-escalation, but yes, he does make that comment. Well, let's talk about that, because okay. right about that time is when Mr. Olson stands up in his seat and turns around, right? Around that time, not at the exact time, I can't commit to, but around right. that time. So certainly, that's more than just blowing Mr. Reeves off, number one, right? You'll agree with me? I would, yes, probably. Number two, you'd agree with me. It's more than just talking back to Mr. Reeves to say, what's your problem, right? I'd say the words would be similar, yes. Well, but now he's taking physical action, Mr. Olson, right? He stands up. And he turns around, right? Correct. And when he turns around to look at in the row he's facing towards the road directly behind him. Yes. The row that Mr. Reeves is in. Yes. With his wife, right? Yes. Now when Mr. Olson gets up, he gets up fast. It's not a slow process, right? It was standing up normally. I wouldn't say any faster than if I was to stand up out of my chair right now. Okay. And he gets up as he gets up. Um, the back of the seat pops up because that's how those seats go, right? You remember that? I don't remember the seat popping up now. Okay. First, let's go back to, to the question before. So is your testimony today that uh, Mr. Olson did not stand up quickly and turn around? He stood up, yes, quickly, but I wouldn't say he jumped up. It wasn't springing up out of his seat, it was standing up. And I think anybody can pretty much stand up quickly unless you're probably having trouble with a part of your body that keeps you from standing up. Okay, like an older yeah. person maybe. Right. And so in this case, um, Mr. Olson stood up quickly. You agree with me now? I, I would say he stood up, yes. Well, is he quickly or not? I wouldn't categorize it as quickly, no. Just, okay. well, that's hard to say. Yes, he stood up. It didn't take more than a second or two, so I would say that was quickly, yes, if, if that's what you're asking. And the, I'm gonna ask you again, this seat that you sit on popped up when he stood up. I can't say that I saw it pop up, no. Okay, it's page 823 of the previous court proceeding, um, line 19.
I'll strike that question, Your Honor. Yeah. So in this, in this case, we agree Mr. Re Mr. Olson stood up and he's facing um, Mr. Reeves and Mrs. Reeves towards their back row, right? Correct. And it's at that point you describe that you are starting to get up at the same time? Shortly after, Chad. Not at the exact same time, no. Okay, shortly after. And um, during that time, um, you say you try to get Chad's attention, Mr. Olson's attention? Correct. Okay. And you were doing that by telling him it's not worth it? No, I did not say anything to him. That's what I was thinking in my head, but I went to tap him to you know, let him know that, hey, focus on me, it's not worth it. But All I did right. not say those words, I don't believe. Now you're showing me that you tapped him with your left hand. In my left hand. Okay. And because Mr. Olson is to your right. Yes. And so for some reason, you're not using your right hand, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. You'll agree with me that your right hand was closer to Mr. Olson than your left hand. Yes. And when you pointed in the board here, you were using the pointer with your right hand. I'm right-handed, yes. But for some reason, you chose to use your non-dominant hand to reach across your body um, to get Mr. Olson's attention. That's your testimony. Yes. And to get his attention, you didn't tap him on the shoulder, right? I didn't have a particular place in mind. It just was a natural reaction. Yes, I would probably think that his shoulder would be where I would try to get, but and didn't so, end up there. And we know what happened, so your reaction turned to be to somehow position your left hand between Mr. Olson, Mr. and Mrs. Reeves, right? Yes. Now you saw the, the video that the prosecutor showed you, you were standing here. Yes. Now there was one part in the video, it was at, and I know you didn't write down the numbers, it was 1326.25. In that image, it appears that Mr. Olson is coming across the aisle because in that frame, you can see his head and his arm. Your testimony today is you didn't see any of that. Correct. Well, he was standing next to you, facing the row behind him. You had your hand out to touch him. Did you feel Mr. Olson move at all? No, I did not. You can't deny that you saw a figure in the frame going forward, correct? That is correct. Okay. The next time, it's about 10 seconds away before we see the popcorn grab. That's something else that you say that you did not see, right? I thought we were just talking about the popcorn. There was a frame at 1326.25 that was 10 seconds before the popcorn grab. Okay. And the prosecutor stopped it right on that frame. Do you not remember that? I, I remember the arm coming out and the popcorn being reached and then the popcorn being thrown. So maybe the time, it, the numbers are throwing me off. Well, that was 10 seconds later. So there was something okay. that happened before. Okay. That's real quickly no, no, visible. I, I, I mean, we're just throwing out frame numbers, 1326. If he wants to show it to her, play it. Ask her. If she can't, she yeah. doesn't know frame by frame. Okay, let me ask you a question then. Let's say, hypothetically, that there's a 10 second gap between Mr. Olson reaching into the back row towards Mr. and Mrs. Reeves and Mr. Olson reaching again back there to grab the popcorn what were you doing for that time period? After Mr. Olson stood up, what were you doing? I can't speak to 10 seconds, but I noticed him standing. It drew my attention, just kind of waiting to see what was happening. And then I started to stand up. I'm looking up as I'm standing in front of me. And then I look over to him to tap him. I never look back here any further I never turned my body around my feet never moved my head looked at Chad as I was going to tap him but I never turned around and saw anything behind me okay so as you're looking at Mr. Olson you don't see him lean over I do not know at any point in time. at any point
Now, after the, the firearm was discharged, we can agree that Mr. Reeves didn't say anything. I did not hear anything, no. I don't have any questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. And I'm going to need to play the video. We have that frame. Do it quickly, around. please. Do it, do it as quickly as you can, please. Yes, ma'am. I do. Right. He gave us the number, so I'm going to Okay. Go. Gotcha. Okay. We're, we're all aware of how long it will take. We've seen you a couple times now. It's not that bad. It's okay. Just. I practice. Yes. Real quick, I have to see everything that you guys do, which is why I've been repositioning. We all have to see everything. Um, I messed up my screen. I turned it off, and it, it didn't come back on where it was supposed to, but I can see it up there. <laughs> see, I, I do it too. She may. Make sure all the jurors can see, please. On um, cross examination, Mr. Michaels asked you about uh, a particular segment, 1326. 
Uh, you use the 25. Let's go ahead and take you to that point. And what I'd like to do, mm -hmm. you indicated to us that's where Mr. Reed shut down. At some point, is when the comment was set. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point, you told us that Chad stood up. Yes, one time. And you stood up with Zach simultaneous almost with him. A couple seconds later, yes. And then that's when you were shot. Yes. Okay. At 13.26.25, let, let's go back this way. See where your husband is? Okay. All right. He only stood up once, correct? One time. All right. And that one time that he stood up, within seconds you were shot. Yes, correct. That's it. That's it. And that was here. That's the one. You did not see the popcorn. I did not. You know he's standing there. Yes, I'm standing up. Okay. And you did not see this. I did not. All right. But what you do know is you never felt the oscillation. Right. He was standing up when I reached over to tap him. He, did. he was not moving forward or backwards. All right. And then you were shot. Correct. What is the time period from the time that you were standing up to when you were shot? Is it five minutes, three minutes, one second, two seconds? Seconds. Just seconds. I mean, Get out of your seat and shot. Today. However shot. many seconds that is. Two. Okay. Three. All right. And you don't know um, where Mr. Michaels was referring to at 36, 1326, 25. Here, where you see, you weren't shot there. No, all I see is Reeves. All right, and? See your husband? No. no okay, no. all right, that's fine. If you don't see it, you don't know it. No. All you know is you stood up and you got shot. Right. Okay. So when I was speaking, I was speaking to the popcorn, which was not at this. May this witness be released? Do you want her on standby? What? She'll be here, so she'll be on standby. Fine. And council approach on that. Everybody, well done. Yes. Yeah. Huh?
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of the day for today. Thank you for your attention all day. It's been another long day. Um, I would like to start at 8.30 tomorrow, and um, but Madam Clerk just indicated to me that um, they, I guess you have a few things to do in the morning before uh, you get here. So um, if you guys could be here at like 10 after 8, quarter after 8, and take care of business with them, and then uh, we'll do our best. We're, we're all here on time, um, but there's a lot of times that things come up, as you've undoubtedly seen in the last six days you've been with us, um, that we have to discuss outside your presence. So um, I, as I, my instruction, I never know how long that's going to take, um, but we definitely try not to waste a minute of your time unnecessarily. So please remember my instructions during the recess. Um, no independent research, no talking about the case, and report to the jury pool room uh, by about 8.10, 8.15, and we will get started at 8.30, and um, Deputy Martin does have, um, she has the clerk's daily letter for each of you, and then the, uh, those of you who requested a letter from me, um, if I missed anybody, uh, just, you can, oh, I can't get it t tonight, I don't think, but I, uh, if, if I miss anybody, I don't think I did, but if I did, um, just hang out in the jury pool room and I'll double check and I'll get, I'll type you something tonight, okay? Um, other than that, you'll be in recess till um, tomorrow morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Well done. See you in the morning.